this one is called the Suicide Squad anime is dot dot dot. What do y'all think? I think a lot of people thought the Suicide Squad was going to be amazing because of the bizarreness of DC and anime, but I think it fell a little short of people's expectations. Let's see what Mr. Scamboli has to say. The Suicide Squad anime made me want to commit. Su it's not that bad, but is this a thing that should exist? Wait, wait, what? Suicide Squad wanted you what? The Suicide Squad anime made me want to commit. Su it's not that bad. Is it bad? Is it not bad? I mean, we watched like what four episodes? I think three or four. The first two, obviously, people were excited because of again, it's a new trend, new virality. But it's just like I think it was just a pretty mid story. It doesn't mean bad. It doesn't mean it's good. It's just meh. And a lot of people kind of dropped it afterwards. But is this a thing that should exist? Let's catch up with the show. Harley Quinn and Joker are blowing stuff up, driving a car controlled via piano. You yeah, that's pretty cool. Intrigued. I've never seen a car controlled by a piano before. Never. Has clown technology advanced so far? And then, your first sign that something is off. <laughs> what, the Joker speaking Japanese? Oh no. Joker is gay. What? Why do you make him care about things? While this is going down, Amanda Waller, an evil government woman. I love Amanda Waller. I don't know anything about her in the DC series because I know nothing about comic book shit. But Amanda Waller depicted in the anime was funny as fuck. Maybe it's the ending that's giving me that bias. It's like, ha 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 ha. I finally opened a portal to anime land. All I need is people to explore it. The Suicide Squad. Clayface can manipulate every aspect of his clay body. Deadshot can shoot anything with perfect Never accuracy. Never misses. John Cena can shoot anything with perfect accuracy. King. Yeah, what the fuck is exactly what what really was Peacemaker's thing? Right? Cause like he shot a lot too. Same with Deadeye. The Peacemaker, no, he was good for like counting. He's super strong and somehow he's like on the spectrum, so he can continue to count the fucking time that's gonna like lapse until they blow up their collars. With perfect accuracy. King Shark is a big fucking shark. In this bitch's power, she's crazy. Does she work out? This is what I don't I don't know. She Apparently is like an Olympic athlete. That was like the reasoning of why she seems superhuman. Like I knew she was a therapist. Apparently she's like an Olympic athlete. I don't know. She's cracked though. She's got superhuman powers. But then the I think the anime also told us that uh, people did get like extra buffs as they went into the isekai world. She work out? This is what I don't get about the Suicide Squad. You need soldiers who are expendable but competent. Okay, grab supervillains. Does adding a crazy bitch with no powers increase the odds of you accomplishing your mission? So I looked. Well, yeah, she has no powers, but like, I don't know. I felt like Harley Quinn was holding her weight. I don't think there has been a moment that I thought that she was like dragging the team down. Her and her like baseball bat powers. I don't know. It was working. It up on Reddit. Why does Harley Quinn keep showing up on this team? And the answer is why? Because she's hot. That's it. You think Suicide Squad. What do people want to see? Harley Quinn. Margot Robbie. That's it. There's nothing else. It's just fan service. She's hot. Okay. She's got a PhD in psychology. She does. She does, yeah. What the fuck? I'm fighting a war. Not well, the psychology portion actually comes into play as Harley Quinn talks to the princess of the Isekai Kingdom, where she looks just like Harley Quinn, and it's just like this two sides of the same coin where she reminds herself of the past Harley Quinn, and she uses the psychology to perhaps, you know, drive character development that way. Not Asperger's. I prefer the guy who just said, I am aroused by clowns. Okay. It was bold. Are we in a helicopter? Amanda Waller sends the Suicide Squad to the anime dimension where they crash land. War surrounds them now, so the squad quickly kills and eats everything. Then this guy shows up and he's like, Bald! Bald! The actual hero of this isekai world is, has the most unfortunate hairline. Who are you guys? Never mind, fuck questions. You're in jail. Peace to your land! The episode that follows is the most immersive piece of media I've ever seen. I thought I was in jail watching this. Give me a penis, quick! Sorry, what? sorry. I'm what? Too immersed. They get as bored as I was and decide to escape. This is where you meet the most detailed background character ever, Chungo. Chungo easily stops the suicide. <laughs> There's a lot of Chungos. Wait, did, yeah, he, did he edit his face? Are these real? Did he edit his face in? 
Ringo easily stops the Suicide Squad and throws them back in jail, but they're not done. This time they free all the prisoners. A carefully trained eye would notice that Chungo has been copied and pasted multiple times. Yeah. Wait, I, I honestly can't remember. Is this real or is Scamboli fucking with me right now? This is actually an animation technique called dick butting. Why are we dancing? Stop! Stop! I'm supposed to hate this show! They win so hard this time, the guy who arrested them actually pulls up and is like, hey. You know, he keeps saying that he's supposed to hate this show, but every time he quote unquote likes this show, it's just a bunch of sus gay jokes talking about dicks. Scamboli, it's not about Suicide Squad. If you want to come out, just fucking say so, bro. They win so hard this time, the guy who arrested them actually pulls up and is like, Hey, if you can help the queen with this war, we'll help you guys out. So they help the queen out real quick, but when they go back to her, she's like, Nah, I don't really like how you did it. To be fair, we fucked up the whole mission, right? We accomplished something, but at the same time, we always fuck more shit up. So we always get locked up. We're back in jail. But the queen has a new problem. Suicide squad! She beckons. I need you to solve my problem again. I sped ran that dialogue, but the show says this for like a whole episode. Why are you keeping us in shackles and shit? Yeah, I don't know either, Harley. It's like a plot device they use when the show runs out of ideas. Oh. To spread out the watch time? Yeah, I could see it. I mean, the whole scene here was so contrived. Like, it could have been handled in a much faster way. But I think they were trying to really show how incompetent the execs were of the, you know, isekai world over here. These dudes, they fucking suck. Oh, you're not talking to me. This time, they end the war without a single casualty. But then this bitch hears about it. Yeah, and then I think this is the part where we dropped the show because no one was clicking on the videos. And it's just like, well, my audience, you know, interests are gone. You guys didn't actually give a fuck about Suicide Squad. It is what it is. But afterwards, I wonder how the story develops. They end up in jail again. That's episodes one through six. You're basically caught up now. But yeah. What? What's wrong with it? What's the problem? Isekai. What's the problem? The problem is that people had the wrong expectation for this show. The problem is that this show is marketed as Suicide Isekai, and the main poll was the Suicide DC IP. Harley Quinn, Joker, they see that shit, people want to click on it. But is there an actual good Isekai story? I think that the plot is pretty mid. Doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it's great. It's just meh. And at that point, I think a lot of people, interest start to wane off because now it's just merely the appeal of Suicide Squad carrying the show since the Isekai story is just kind of whatever. And a lot of the weebs don't really give a fuck about the IPs of DC series either, I don't think. So that's my theory on why Suicide Squad fell off. Guy is the mumble rap of the anime industry. It's cheap and takes very little creativity to make. Which is weird yeah. because Isekai just means another world. In mm -hmm. theory, there are infinite stories you can tell. I've seen worlds where death is currency, creepy shit lurks in every alleyway, and you understand less- But here's the thing, Scamboli. The anime industry is not trying to pump out good quality Isekai. We're just trying to pump out as many dog shit volume of content so that the shareholders can meet their fucking bottom line by min-maxing all the shitty, shitty isekais every month. Less about the world, the more you explore it. For some reason, when you attach the word isekai to a world, you get none of that. You get the same fucking green plane. Hey, 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 don't shit on uh, this is level two cheat skill. This isekai was actually fucking good if you can get over the first episode. Green planes smacked onto a medieval European setting where there's yeah. kobolds, orcs, ogres, magic... Slavery. There's always slavery with isekai. Circles, dragons, and goddamn royal political drama. I don't care about royalty. Even in real life, people are like, Oh my god, Megan and Andrew did this. Who I'm indifferent about royalty in Isekai. I don't really care, but if it serves to create a world building that I actually give a fuck about and expands the world through the system of hierarchies, then sure. But like, yeah, is it really doing anything new? I don't really think so. Who the fuck are these people? Do they even have political power or are these just British Kardashians? Pretty much, right? This is just bullshit. I don't know why the people just like are fine with like modern fucking it, like, it, it, like, why do people put these motherfuckers on, like, a throne? What do they do? What do they genuinely do? I, I, I'm really uneducated in this field of, like, European royalty and why they're still fucking role-playing as, like, kings and queens and princes and princesses. Like, does this shit matter? 
So I'm sitting here watching this damn Suicide Squad show. Why well, I gotta spend two episodes in jail while the characters negotiate with the royal family? If I can't remember the name of your kingdom, what makes you think I want to know about their fucking politics? Good point. Good point. They did kind of throw us into the politics immediately, expecting us to give a fuck. But if you don't have the world building like foundations, the fundamentals not set, then what, just throwing us into the middle of things just doesn't really make sense. He's, Scambully's right. It makes for a bland story where they start talking and you start pulling your phone out. Even in episode six, the Suicide Squad is cleaning up the Empire's ops again, and this time they're in serious trouble. Okay. Half the team is incapacitated. Really? In random ditch. Why do they- How the fuck is this dude on a fucking chair taking out the entire Suicide Squad? What the fuck is going on here? Thank you, Enrico, with the two months of subs, man. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Why do they end up in prison again? Does the royal family- Because it's Suicide Squad. They complete mission, then they get locked up. Then they have to have a reason to pull them out. It's just this con continuous like running gag of Suicide Squad, solve the mission, but they fucked up more things, so they get punished. But now a new problem happens, and now the royalty are like, oh man, who do we got to send in to, to solve this? Oh, I have an idea, Suicide Squad. And then they get broken out. It's just a loop over and over. Family use Apple AirTags? Did they just voluntarily walk back in jail? Oh, yeah. I think. It's a consequence of volunteering for the Isekai setting. It's called Suicide Squad Isekai to signal mm -hmm. to you that it's going to have the tropes you're familiar with, which boxes in the writers. Because for them, they need to think, okay, why is the Suicide Squad being Isekai? What do they do while they're there? How do we incorporate all these checkboxes that make the subgenre what it is? Of course they can't put them in a unique world. That'd work against the marketing. I imagine it's like being forced to animate a what-if scenario you made with your friends. What if zombies fight freaking Ezio? Cool thought, but... No, cool thought, do that. If you so basically, the constraints of Suicide Squad and trying to follow that isekai anime genre that we all know and love is the thing that's limiting this anime and is delivering such a mid-product. Feels like there's no direction. When Harley Quinn deflected a dragon's fire blast with a giant frying pan, I said, fuck <laughs> it. I'd rather see this than the characters beg to be let out of jail a fourth time. I came looking for booty. When yeah, it's the <laughs> True. I came looking for Harley Quinn as well, yeah. The constant just like cycle of getting locked up and d installing and being shown exposition of royal fucking politic drama that we don't really care about because again the fundamentals of the world building was never set in place and we don't actually care about the world makes it for a very slow boring experience i get it when they're not trying to tell a story it's entertaining i like the dance number and the frying pan it's when they start trying to build a world that we've already seen a thousand times that it loses steam i feel got it they needed to do more wacky shit right because like when exactly exactly remember the fucking prison break the dance shit like this shit was fun right this shit was genuinely fun this is when suicide squad is in its element but then after that's done we get boxed back into the isekai format and because this is such a mid isekai just like it just fails so they should have just like said fuck the isekai tropes just we're in a different world and we do our own thing with the Suicide, suicide Squad like, uh, uh, spice to it, and maybe that would have done better. ...to build a world that we've already seen a thousand times that it loses steam. I feel the writers going, uh... What do the characters do now? That's not good. Just like the... Art? Art. This show is butt-ass ugly. And I'm... Is it? Well... It's probably because we watched so many shitty animes that this art looks good. I didn't think that any part of the animations looked bad. Right now, I'm just fucking mad with Failure Frame, bro. If you, have you seen an anime called Failure Frame this season? Holy shit, the CGI is so fucking atrocious. It's not that CGI is bad. It's the usage of CGI and the transitions from 2D to 3D that's just so fucking jarring that it's just a fucking whiplash every time. And I can't help but just be pissed off and laugh at it and be like, fuck. This is just stupid. Like, I'm trying to appreciate the show, but I can't even do it because I can't even take you seriously because you're just taking me out of the fucking show every time you try to min-max the CGI. I don't think I'm even being unreasonable with this. Truly. In the first episode one reaction, I gave Failure Frame, you know, uh, a benefit of the doubt because the first half, the usage of CGI was pretty good. And I was like, nothing seems very off. 
Then we enter the labyrinth and things start to get dark. And what do they do? Whenever the environment's dark, they strike to, you know, sneak in CGI here and there trying to hide that shit. Failure frame, honestly, most pathetic animation of all the animes that I'm watching this season. And compared to Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad looks fucking amazing. I'm an open-minded person. When I click a YouTube video and hear a British voice, I don't leave right away. What is up, guys? Today we're going to be playing a little bit of Call of Duty. You're not going to believe the Moabs and kill streaks I got. Call a duty. Call a duty. Bottle of water. However, the art actively challenges your ability to keep watching. It's like the show writers see you locked in and go, Quick, f*** this guy's immersion. <laughs> There's a war that threatens the lives of thousands, and it's at the start of an episode where the art's gotta look the best. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, bro, hey, get that finger out of my face. Yeah, it is kind of mid for sure. But what we're watching is so bad that I'm thinking the mid is good. My perception of like what is good and bad has changed so much because of the pure amount of slop that I'm covering on a fucking seasonal basis that I'm even starting to think that Suicide Squad's looking good. Fuck. Bro, hey, get that finger out of my face. It's, it's all right. Amazing. For one, in Wistoria, Wand Ooh, and Shield, every- Oh, yes. Now we're fucking talking about real animation. Wistoria and Elusive Samurai, Oshinoko, Roshitere. I don't go Koba, just, you know, just always polished product. Yeah, this is actually good animation. Every frame looks like a promotion for Genshin Impact or something. But there are cut corners. You'll notice CGI pillars in the background. And But the usage of the CGI assets does not distract me or pull me away from the series, right? That is the thing. This is how you do good CGI. Where you see CGI and you don't even fucking recognize it because it's so fluid and like adapted perfectly to the environment. You watch Failure Frame, it's like a fucking whiplash. CGI pillars in the background, and that's good. It's out the way. It doesn't pull me away from the show. If you have a battlefield where every single soldier is the same guy, that defeats the fucking point of him being in the Well, you know, the classic isekai war where instead of animating every single individual soldier, what do you do? You put him in armor, you hide their faces, everyone looks like a copy-pasted version, and you do CGI, and you min-max it. Such lazy, lazy animation, but it's to save resources. And again, at the end of the day, all these anime studios and producers, what are they trying to do? Pump out slop. It's all about quantity over quality, unfortunately, in the battle of capitalism and the race to the fucking bottom. It's the fucking point of him being in the background, doesn't it? Because now I can't look anywhere else. But scam, budget, deadlines. Hey, mm -hmm. check this out. Scheduling. My gangster will not be. <laughs> See? Different guy. Hey, at least he tried. Give me a different helmet. Yeah. Give me a different style armor. Give me a different helmet. Nah, even that is too much work. And here's the talking point that I hear a lot from bootlickers that fucking deep throats the anime industry and say, huh, it's because of you that speak out against CGI, that these animator studios, they're making their employees work 25 hours. Don't you have any, any sorrow for them? It's like, shut the fuck up, pussy. How about you think about it differently? Why are you already just on the knees, just doing tricks off of it? Think about this. Why do they even have these deadlines? Why are they given these small amount of budget? It's not about us wanting a good product. It's that they're so fucked in their system and how they operate that they were set up to fail. And if you had simply not been so fucking greedy and backed off and instead of taking 10 separate enemy projects that you can't even deliver and only worked on two or three with an actual proper budgeting and timeline and schedule, people can have their work-life balance and we can get the work that it deserves. And you don't need 10 shitty fucking isekais every season to meet the bottom line. I feel like one single good anime can make a bigger impact than 10 shitty new gates. Truly. One single Demon Slayer. Oh, fuck it. Not even a season. One single Demon Slayer finale episode like the Hashira training arc, that will do much more in terms of marketing, in terms of bringing the eyes in and having people get hyped up and buy fucking merch and DVDs compared to 10 fucking entire seasons of like New Gates or Suicide Squads, bro. Stop fucking deep throwing these corporations and fucking think critically for a second and ask yourself, why am I siding with the corporation? Just think about that infringed upon as a lazy editor myself you can copy and paste characters without it being a jump scare 
That brings me to my second issue, consistency. Have you noticed that every character looks like they're from a different show? Harley Quinn was clearly the main selling point of the show. You will not find her looking ugly. But then the pink thing is just Isekai Boomhauer. Pink thing? Bro, my man, give him some respect. He's the fucking hero of this Isekai world. Are you gonna call him Isekai Boomhauer? You can understand this dude. This dude talks like you can hear Cecil, but like, do they actually look that bad? The consistency of the animation. Animation is something that I prioritize the least amount. And yes, I'll joke about CGI, but my eyes just aren't accustomed to good animation and bad animation. So even a subtle difference like this, I can't really recognize. Uh, Amanda Waller looks like she's from the Boondocks. What's up with that? We don't even need to jump from character to character. What did you say? Amanda Wallace she looks like she's from the boondocks? That's gotta be racist. <laughs> nah, it's not. Boondocks, what's up with that? We don't even need to jump from character to character. Here's Deadshot. Okay, I know that guy. Here's Deadshot in a different episode. <gasps> but this was like prison. It was a flashback in the past. He's all scruffy. They're all like, what do you think? He's not getting properly groomed. Like, really? Deadshot here? Well, you can't really see you use the argument of he's still in a prison because he is still in a prison. He comes in out of prisons over and out. You know what I mean though? Even if he's multiple times locked up in the fucking Ethan guy. It's a past dude flashback where it wasn't really the same. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Okay, I know that guy. Here's Deadshot in a different episode. <gasps> Here's possibly the same. Oh! 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 oh what the? Yo, is th this is Giga Chad! Giga Chad Deadshot, what the fuck? Kind of, this isn't CGI, right? I don't think so. It's just the art style so different here. Oh, oh, damn! They locked in. Mewing, mewing. Peacemaker. <laughs> mewing. Scamboli is with the culture. He understands current trends. Mewing, mewing. Deadshot, fucking locked in. Mewing. Peacemaker grabs him by the shoulder. I need head. Okay. Oh, even more locked in. I need head. What do you mean? There's no consistency. These could be slices from different shows, which is quite a departure from episode one. The line art is crisp. The action is slow, but yeah. And you know what this is? This is called a hook. You catfish people. You fucking go all out. Given the best episode one, hook the audience. And then when you got them by the balls, what do you do? You release the grip for whatever reason. And you fuck up everything that you built up for. I don't know, I feel like trying to have episode 1 look so good and vibrant and beautiful obviously is the most important thing, right? The first impression for an anime is make or break. I know there's a three episode rule, but most normies don't even fucking carry out three episodes. If the first episode wasn't good enough, they're gonna drop that shit and move on. But it's just like, once you cook them in, don't you think it's in your best interest to at least deliver, you know, a higher standards rather than thinking that, okay, we got their initial bait. Now we're going to continue delivering slop. The action is slow, but unique. Look how the characters fight in their environment as if it were 3D. Yeah. It was cool. Life was good before. I remember this animation fighting and I was like, whoa, what is this called? Like a rotoscope to something? I'm not sure, but I did recognize that the animation there looked unique and good. I was catfished. Later, they introduced Crayon Dragon and oh my- Hey, at least Crayon Dragon here is not CGI. There's a standard of, uh, of like, the way that I gauge whether or not a studio actually gives a fuck about their animation is through a couple things, but quite often it's either a dragon or a horse carriage in the isekai shows and check, are they CGI or not? Now, it doesn't really definitively mean that if it's CGI, that's going to be bad. And if it's not CGI, it's going to be good. But I've noticed that when these things, these stereotypical CGI elements are not CGI, Usually the anime studio actually gives a fuck. And, and oh my god, is that skedaddling? When I see Beepus, Otaku-sama, and Mug echoing the same thoughts as me, I know something's up. Me <laughs> yes, the most important opinions in the anime industry. Otaku-sama, what the fuck is this dog shit animation? Beepus says, I don't think the animation got bad, but it was def definitely all over the place. And Mug says, the animation quality dropped like 2x. Three dislikes! Me and Beepus never agree. What other comments are there? Bro, Harley shoddy looking hot AF, not gonna lie. Smash, for real, for real. Nambra's correct. Nambra's right. Okay. There's some clown worship. The art is good sometimes and terrible. 
other times. But is that enough to take away from the show? Absolutely. In an well, the thing about art and does it take away from the show? To me, at least, this is my personal opinion. The reason, like, let me go back to the example of Failure Frame, right? And how much I shit on it. But then you're going to say, Kaka, bro, what are you talking about? You've seen, you know, so I'm a spider, so what? You've seen that dog shit CGI isekai. Here's the difference. The difference is that that isekai, I do not watch it for the fights because the story is so fucking good. It's unfortunate that the fights near in season two, near the end, the war shit was all CGI. It was dog shit. But because they were able to entice me in the first season with an amazing world building and a plot that I was so interested into, I never gave a fuck about the fight scenes. In fact, that's like secondary to me. I just care about Wakaba and her growth and evolution and trying to figure out, you know, where are the other, other kids and what is the politics going on. That shit is so good to the point I'm over, willing to overlook the bad animation. Of course, I want better animation. But that's why I think that even if it's bad animation, bad CGI, I'm willing to overlook it. But when you have a show like Failure Frame, where I don't care about the story, I don't care about the world just yet, and it's fine because it's only four episodes in. But the thing is, it's four episodes in and the CGI is already dog shit. In Spider, it wasn't like that. The CGI was apparent, but it wasn't that dog shit. And now I'm being more critical towards Failure Frame because you're giving me dog shit animation and I don't even care about the story and I don't even watch it for the fights. I'm caring more about the isekai you know, plot going on. Take that example and let's apply it to Suicide Squad. You care about the story? If you don't, then at least the fight's gotta be good. If you have something like Jujutsu Kaisen, if you have something that's like a battle shonen where people watch that shit for purely the fight, you cannot be fucking up the animation. And if the art style diminishes, then people don't care because they're there to watch like eye candy. And in Suicide Squad, if the story isn't good, then what, what are we people watching for? What are people fucking watching for? Demon Slayer, exactly. Do we care about the plot in Demon Slayer? Fuck no. I just want motherfuckers yelling, you know, Muzanda and just like fighting. That's what we care about. And they deliver with movie tier animation, right? You can't be fucking around with art when your story is, has a, if your story doesn't have a story. The show, absolutely. In an anime where the story and world aren't stimulating, I want to look at it and see the polish. Where they exactly. What did he just say? In a world where the story and the world aren't stimulating, the least you could do is give me some fucking eye candy, goddammit. But you can't even do that. I want to look at it and see the polish. Where do they spend the effort? Because when they run, I don't see it. When they talk, I don't hear it. I'm not biting my nails hoping the Suicide Squad isn't dead. What? Spoiler, they're obviously not fucking dead on episode 6. Harley, why are you crying? We barely know these people. And despite all of this, I think it's impossible to be disappointed. The Suicide Squad really does go to Isekai. Not Crystal Cavern, not Freddy's. They simply go to Isekai. So from yeah. the beginning, we were promised mid. And that's okay. It's like watching your grandpa... Yeah, you were promised mid, you were given mid, and remember, mid doesn't mean bad. Mid means just average, mediocre, middle of the pack, and a lot of people have, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of negative stigma with the word mid now, simply because people have popularized it to the point where people think that mid means worse than bad, but it means all right. Play Elden Ring, or you ever befriend an Asian guy who's new to English and go, hey, say f uh, you want me say fuck? Yes, Kevin. It's gotta be racist. <laughs> yes, I do. It's like that. These are two concepts that I'm pleasantly yeah. surprised to see interact. It's fun seeing characters I'm familiar with interact with tropes from a completely different For sure. But that's all the show really has so far. There's currently six episodes up, and every week I watch thinking, yeah, if this wasn't for work, there's no chance I'd watch this. I don't think it's an anime that needed to be made. I can't feel the passion from the show. It just feels like- Yeah, no passion from the show. Kind of felt that. But at the end of the day, I think this was just set up as a project to... And, and the goal was probably try to introduce Suicide Squad to the anime fans? What are they trying to do with this anime? Trying to get more weebs into DC? Or are they trying to get more DC fans to enjoy anime? Maybe a little bit of both. But while doing that, it, it feels like a lazy collab. Here's an example I feel about it. You will ever play gacha games, right? You ever play gacha games and your favorite gacha game finally gets a collab? With the famous IP. Maybe it's a Demon Slayer collab, bro. Maybe it's a Street Fighter collab. Maybe it's a Jujutsu Kaisen collab. Your favorite anime units are coming into the gacha game that you love. And people are fucking hyped. But sometimes those collaborations are so lazy. And they just kind of use this slap on the fucking IP. And they hope that it carries it. And the content's really fucking weak. 
that's kind of how I feel about this, where it's a collab, right? DC, you know, Suicide Squad's coming in. But at the same time, the polish isn't really there, and they're hoping that the IP and the fact that it's such a unique setting will somehow... Setting as in... Isekai isn't unique, but Suicide Squad in Isekai is unique. They were hoping that virality would somehow carry with the lackluster story, and, you know... If you give mid effort, you're gonna get a mid response. Like more superheroes being milked as hard as possible. My prescription. This is a brain off show. You put this in the background of a Discord call and you will have a decent time. Almost like watching a Scamboli video. Oh my god, it's so engaging. Any response to comments? You gotta subscribe. Thank you for watching. As much as honestly, Scamboli's like video essay reviews are quite refreshing and fun to watch, and you can see the viewership. Yes, of course, he has a lot of subs, but at the same time, the viewership kind of pretty much proves that, like, he's never fallen off. And, like, this content is very engaging. It gives very thoughtful, you know, opinions on the anime he watches. And I agree for the most part of many things he said. Guys, please go give Scamboli a sub. Like his videos if you did. And, yeah, I think that Suicide Squad, there's no, no reason to hate on it. It's not a bad anime. It's just that people are having different expectations because it's like, oh, my God, Suicide Squad's coming to anime. How's it going to be? It was maybe okay in a bit, and then a lot of people start to realize... I guess this is the extent of the anime, but hey, doesn't mean that it's bad. Mid doesn't mean bad. You can still enjoy it.